G'day lads and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this is a video tutorial on making storyboards. Storyboards are extremely useful. I find the two most useful scenarios for them are A, when I have a very long sort of narrative to tell and there are more kind of visually important scenes and B, when I'm working with a client and uh, communication is key, when I need to create a visual representation to show them what I'm trying to create for them and then it's easy to make changes and alterations before going forward with the full animation project. They're extremely useful because you get to create a visual representation of what the final scene will be laid out like and uh, how things will be ordered visually without necessarily creating the investment or making it up as you go. Now there's something of a twin brother to the storyboard which is called an animatic and that's an animated version of a storyboard. I guess you could see it that way. But we're gonna go uh, forward with looking at storyboards today and the subject that we're gonna be using is the intro to this channel. Channel. So the old intro, which looks a little something like this. is going to be replaced with a brand new intro. And we're going to start the process today with storyboards. And I'm gonna show you my storyboard base and uh, show you how I would go about making storyboards for an animation segment. So as you can see, I've got here, ladies and gentlemen, my storyboard base. So the most obvious part of this is this middle box frame, which is a 16 by nine ratio box. Uh, now in this area is basically where I will draw uh, whatever's happening in that scene or in that frame. As you can see, I've got a very light red box of the same ratio, a little bigger around it. And that's just to kind of indicate that there's outside area around the stage. So that basically uh, while I'm drawing my scene there might be something about to come in that I can draw outside of the frame uh, and indicate that it's moving in so that's quite a useful sort of area and the other thing you can use it for is annotation so if for example uh, someone is about to do some sort of motion or I want to make a, a note for someone else who might see the storyboards I generally might write them in these outside areas of the frame otherwise there are two other key parts of this storyboard the top left here is the number indication area so normally you have storyboards boards numbered in order. And then this bottom area here is a text area. And this might be where I fill in uh, instructions to a director. Let's say if this is a storyboard for a live action scene, uh, it also might be for script. So if I write a character's line down there, that's what that area is for. Now you can access this storyboard and the Photoshop version, which I'll be using momentarily to do the drawing in from the reference link in the description where you can download the reference file. And the benefit of this format is that when you hit to print it, it comes up with these options where essentially you can, if you want, print up lots on one page and it's kind of set up so that you can fit several in the one page and things like that. So uh, I've made it as convenient and uh, sort of generic and usable as possible. So if you want to use it, make sure to check out the reference files in the description. This is the Photoshop version of the storyboards and the difference is that it's in layers and I have these two layers here. One is a storyboard number layer where essentially I can create my number and then the other one is a descriptive text area which you can't see because my face is covering it but when I hide the camera you can see essentially there I can just hit T for text and then type whatever I want right here whatever <laughs> whatever whatever I want so we're gonna get started. I'm going to use the Photoshop file to actually draw my storyboards in. And all I need to do really is uh, find whatever drawing tool I want and draw and have as many layers as I want to draw my storyboards in here with. Now I'm gonna use my pencil sketch tool, which is from the Kyle T. Webster brush series, which you can get by looking up on Google Kyle T. Webster. He's got some fantastic brush sets. And essentially it's got this sort of blue sketchy look and I just kind of like it. It's got that rough feel. It lets me be pretty free and creative with how I draw and move around the picture. And the first storyboard frame is going to be a pencil that appears on screen. Now that's a little big, I'm just gonna bring it down a bit. So this is going to be animated eventually in Adobe Flash and I'm going to create tutorials over the next coming weeks going through the whole process of creating the animated intro, which I did with my old animated intro as well. But the first thing that happens is we have this gray lead pencil that whooshes into the screen and I need to indicate uh, that motion. Because I don't have motion to work with in storyboards, it's just a static image, I'm going to indicate it with an arrow and I want to kind of have it whoosh out a bit so it shows that it kind of 
enlarges and then comes in to the frame slightly smaller. So I can also kind of move things around and resize as I need to. But in the end, that is basically what I need for the first frame. And now using the descriptive text field below, I'm going to enter that a pencil appears on screen. And quite as simple as that, I have my first storyboard completely finished. Now, because I want to do more than one storyboard, I'm going to organize my Photoshop file a bit so that I can create more and quite easily uh, scroll between them. So I'm going to click here to create a folder and I'm just going to hit number one and I'm going to click and drag my drawing in there and then close the folder. So that means every time I hit the eye icon on number one, it hides and reappears. I'm also going to shift click these two text areas and I'm going to drag them into number one. And it means when I hide them, they disappear and appear as well. Now that gives me a really easy way to create new storyboards because all I have to do is right click on this folder area and hit duplicate group and I'll name it two. And then I can hide number one and go in here and just delete the drawing that I did and change the number of the storyboard to number two. And now I can draw in what the second storyboard is. And the second storyboard is going to be a drawing will appear that will be drawn by the pencil of a character running across the screen. Now the character will be the avatar of myself, uh, which you saw in the old intro. And I'm just going to be animating it fairly fluidly and frame by frame style and I'll be going through those in uh, tutorials in the future but he's going to be running and it's going to be in a construction line format so he won't be polished and finished he'll be sort of scratchy looking like he was a sketch by a pencil and then the rest of the storyboards will show you the direction that that's going to go in but for the sake of showing you what I'm doing with storyboards I've got the character here I've got my pencil and I've also got some other sketchy things appearing so I'm just going to very lightly draw like a few uh, construction line looking things. Here's an arm, here's a hand, here's a, a torso, things like that. And I know it looks a little weird now, but what's going to end up happening is in the full animation, as this character is being drawn by the pencil, these other uh, sketches start appearing around him and, and is running past them in this world of illustration that's appearing around him. So as you can tell, I quite clearly know what I'm going to be doing with the animation, but it's going to be up to me to convey that in the storyboard. So what I'm going to do is indicate with an arrow that the pencil is now receding and going to go away from the scene. This character is also running forward, so I can use a big fat arrow to indicate that. And then in my text area, I'm going to select the text and I'm going to annotate what happens. So, so character is drawn running past sketches that appear being drawn around him. Pencil goes away. So as you can see, it's almost done in a dot point form where I quite clearly state exactly sequentially what happens. And that is storyboard number two. So now that I've shown you how I go about creating the storyboards in this format, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the magic of editing to skip ahead to all of the storyboards being done. And I'm going to take you through it finished and you can see the finished result of several storyboards depicting one animation sequence. Kapow! And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, through the magic of editing, I've skipped about half an hour into the future where I've finished all my storyboards. So I'm going to take you through them now and just kind of go through uh, what the finished result looks like. You've seen the first storyboard, a pencil appears on screen. In the second storyboard, we have a character who is drawn running past sketches that appear being drawn around him. Pencil goes away. Now you can see visually, this is all quite you know, clear. We've got the character and we see what direction he's running in because of where he's facing and where the arrow's pointing. We see where the pencil is going to be receding because of the arrow direction and things like that. Now in our next frame, we have Jazza Avatar prepares to jump through an approaching tower of paint buckets. And on the left there, we have this tower of paint buckets drawn and we have the character on the right crouching, getting ready to jump with the direction line still showing uh, where the motion is going. So again, it's pretty straightforward. Storyboard number four, we have Jazza leaps through Tower of Paint, emerging through splashes fully coloured. 
the walls and floor on the other side of the tower are splashed with all colors of the rainbow. So essentially, uh, we have this extreme burst of motion and I've used a red sketch line to indicate that the motion there is quite extreme just to kind of make it stand out from the blue everywhere else. Uh, and it, it's meant to be a very uh, dynamic moment. So he splashes through, color is everywhere, and all of a sudden this sketch character emerges through fully colored. So I can use techniques as shown in this case to indicate where there will be uh, a lot of dynamic animation or a lot of extreme motion. So in storyboard five, we have Jazza slides past the splashy area, approaching his final placement next to the appearing draw with Jazza logo. And I'm just using some simple motion indicators on the frame uh, to show what is happening. So we have the slide and then we have the arrow in the opposite direction to show that the draw with Jazza logo is approaching him. And you can see that I've used the outside space of the frame to show that there's more there that will be appearing. And then the final frame is one that is familiar to my viewers, which is essentially the Draw With Jazza final logo with the avatar of myself and the text Draw With Jazza. So that's the final pose and placement and I want the character to slide uh, and eventually come to a stumbled stop and cross his arms and stand smugly next to his logo. And that is what the new animation will be. Now, uh, it's going to be quite a lot of work to produce because there's going to be a lot of dynamic animation. There's going to be liquid animation. There's going to be uh, some dynamic sound effects and all that sort of stuff so it's going to be quite a lot of work but with starting with a base like this uh, where I have everything really clearly laid out in front of me I have a very clear guide to work from to make the final animation possible so the next stage is going to be creating an animatic and I'm going to be going into that with you next week where we're going to be starting to add motion to all of this and create a sense of timing and a sense of uh, dynamic animation where the, uh, the physics are going to be happening and how the sense of pacing will be produced. So thank you for joining me ladies and gentlemen and until next time I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel to see new content every week. Check out more of my stuff by clicking the annotations over there. You can get the reference files for this tutorial by clicking the link in the description and if you want the reference files for all the tutorials I've ever made check out the tutorial archive. If you're looking for a great place to collaborate, explore or share your own content head over to newgrounds.com. That's it for now and until next time, see you later.